ZDP auto IP or Cisco's SD-WAN. I wanted to cover a functionality here within Cisco's SD-WAN, uh, you know, known as auto IP. And that is when the service provider is not providing you with a DHCP address for your VPN zero on the interface zero, 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 one, whatever you decide. We all know that traditionally, if you have a DHCP functionality, uh, the VH1000, 2000, or whatever you have is going to pull an IP address from the service provider, contact DNS, resolve the tele.zttp.com, and from there on, we all know how the control plane works. However, what if the service provider is assigning you a static IP address? What if he's just not going to lease you out a DHCP? Well, ZTP still works, and the way it functions is basically the device itself, VH1000 or 2000, is going to set up itself with an IP address based on an ARP, okay? So let's say you've got a VEdge 1000 and that VEdge 1000 is facing your service provider. The service provider, PE router, is going to ping your VEdge 1000 with an IP address that you're supposed to claim. The VEdge 1000 is going to look that ARP verify that on the network this ARP is not being used, add it to a candidate list, and from there on it's going to assign it to the interface connected to that PE. Now in my case right now I got a VEdge uh, 1000 uh, which is right here running 18.4. I'm gonna log in real quick. Uh, <clears throat> this VEdge right now has absolutely no configuration which I'm going to show you show run system here uh, you can see there's nothing on it it's just uh, the typical uh, you know factory defaulted and for interface description uh, nothing as well uh, GE00 is connected to my PE router and in my case here uh, the PE router is just a catalyst 9k I'm going to show you the interface configuration 1011 so it's just set as a no switch port obviously uh, I have a VRF light on my switch so I put it on VRF 300 just so I can demonstrate packet captures for you guys uh, over here I got a firewall uh, I'll capture SD WAN real time and uh, I'm just doing a packet capture to verify how things are going to work so here we go so my IP address as a service provider on TE1011 is set to 150.55.1.1. I would like for the VEdge to claim the 150.55.1.2. To do that, I'm just going to simply ping that IP address, ping VRF V300 uh, 150.55.1.2, sourcing it from this address here as well, just to be on the safe side because I got other stuff going on in that VRF. And I'm going to repeat it for uh, let's say 250 okay before I do that I'm going to my vEdge and just do uh, just to take a look at the syslog just so we can see what's going on request execute tail minus f slash var log slash v syslog I believe yes so nothing here uh, we can see actually that obviously the vEdge is doing a thing it's trying to get an uh, IP address using DHCP nothing is really happening okay we're just going to start that ping and we're just going to hit enter. One, two, three. Okay. So nothing is happening over here. Obviously that address is not claimable yet. What's happening in the background right now is the V edge is intercepting that R and adding that two address to its candidate list. So we're just going to wait a little bit and, you know, see what's going to happen. It's not going to be quick. Uh, it's not going to be like a one second or 10 second thing. It's probably, it took me like 30, between 30 seconds to two minutes to get this fully functional. So let's wait and see what's going to happen. So the ping is still going. Okay, we can see something starting to happen here, okay? Let's take a look. Uh, it looks like, uh, well, 
I could have lied here. Oh, not really. You can see what happened. So the ping is now responding and that's because the Vitella most likely claimed that address. Uh, you can see here that the BSV client is put in a, put an address. I know it shows as a 150.55.1.2 for DHCP, but it's not, okay? It's not a DHCP is what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and see what's happening. So interface description, uh, you can see instantly uh, the G00 automatically set itself to a 150.55.1.2. The submit mask is wrong, I get that, but that's really uh, out of scope for this uh, because we're only interested in talking to Cisco's cloud. Instantly on the firewall, obviously what's happening here is we can see that Vitella V Edge 1000 is 150.55.1.2 communicating with 888.44.44 uh, and obviously it's trying to resolve uh, you know, VED, sorry, ZTP.Vitella.com to confirm. Uh, capture SD WAN, I think uh, decode is the uh, okay, actually show capture uh, SD WAN uh, decode, I believe. Uh, we might need the dump command as well just to confirm. I don't want to have to put this in a wire shark. So, yeah, I mean, we can see ZTP.Vitella.com is that thing that we're doing. Now, I don't have obviously the full control plane prepped for this video, but in a typical world, in a typical scenario, what's going to happen is the VH1000 is going to communicate with ztp.vitella.com, and from there, he's going to get redirected through Cisco's cloud to the proper VBond, to the proper vSmart vManage, and from there on, we get on Fabric. So, I think this is a really good feature. Uh, now, there are some caveats, obviously. Uh, the VEdge is simply not going to claim its uh, IP address on its own. So it's not going to basically go in and ARP and check who's, you know, who's ARP, uh, who's, who on the network is not ARPing and assume that address. There is a service, a service provider requirement to send that ping or anything that gives the VEdge the hint that it should claim that address. Normally an ICMP ping like you guys saw in the video works. Uh, the subnet mask inconsistency, I've seen that happen all the time. So the Vitella is just not going to uh, claim the exact address, okay? The exact subnet mask, which is fine because the only thing we're interested in is going out to the internet. So a few things to verify and take into consideration. Show run VPN zero. So in VPN zero, you can see that the VEdge did not append any configuration, okay? So this is done within software, almost like a DACP show IP root VPN zero as well. Uh, we can see that we did put the static IP and we pointed it to the PE router where that ping was coming from. So I've initiated the ping from the 150, 155, 1.1 being my PE. I've hit it, I've targeted dot two, which is the actual candidate for the VH to claim. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I think it's a, this is a great functionality. Uh, most of us engineers, when we're turning up UV edges, we are already uh, with the service providers, you know, asking them to do stuff uh, when we're turning circuits up. So it wouldn't hurt uh, to ask them to send an ICMP ping because what's going to happen in the background for most people is we just want the V edge to talk to the cloud. The minute it talks to the cloud, chances are we have our uh, template ready. We've got all our policy ready. So VH1000 is just going to communicate with the cloud. It's going to pull that IP. It's going to pull that template and it's going to put the IP address that you already have in the template for VPN zero, which I hope you've already documented and you've already staged. So which will automatically correct that submit mask, uh, you know, the, the default route, whatever the service provider has basically given you. So short video, uh, I hope you guys like it.